You know, Leech Lake is one of those bodies of water that we make a point to fish every year. And you know, when you look at the entire area and all the different species, you know, the fishing opportunities, you can come out here any time of the year and experience some incredible fishing. But by and large, you can't go wrong with Leech Lake shortly after the opener. And the thing about Leech Lake that's so unique is that there's just so much shallow water. So there's a lot of fishing in less than 10 feet of water. Years past, you know, whenever we had a late ice out, this water stays cool for a long time where these fish don't transition on these sand flats. Typically you have incredible fishing on Leech Lake up in these shallow sand areas. Just gorgeous here. That's a perfectly healthy fish. Beautiful. How does he feel? Uh, it's just an average walleye, I think. Uh, I hit a waypoint here, just so yeah. you remember it. Uh, yeah. It's just a nice walleye. Here, let me grab that net here. All right, nice work, Al. Boy, that water is surprisingly clear, isn't it? Here we go, nice. Nice. Boy, that'd be a great fish yeah. for a- Great for the pan. Frying pan, <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's been the pattern to chase uh, Puto and Green. Yeah, there's a lot of fish like that in the yeah. right now. Yeah, very healthy. Put her back Good in the show. right away. Nice. Well, Good. Broke the ice. Yeah. Well, right now, you know, we had a brutal winter, and we didn't think the ice was even going to be out uh, at this particular point. This is the opener, May 12th to 14th, you know, in that category. So typically on Leech Lake at this point, we're always on a bite that's going to be a jig and a minnow to start out with. The water temp is a cold 40. 8 or 47 but um it was a real slow start we're fishing today out in traders bay and on leech lake and jigging them in and it has been good but uh, it's a long line presentation with a jig don't work it fast the minnows it seems like spot tails if you can get a hold of them were the best but the rainbows and the smaller fat heads worked out pretty good nobody's on a crawler bite yet or on a uh, leech bite so we'll take what happens it's been, but it has been good Bigger one, huh? Yep. You saw these fish actually on the side yeah. scan. Maybe Spun you saw back it. around on them. Another nice eater. Nice. Uh, yep. Good show. It's good to see a lake in Minnesota where you can come out and if you wanted to catch a lot of fish to eat. I think the speed is the may be the factor too, Chase. I had to go, I was going pretty fast yesterday. Yeah. Sometimes you speed up and then that jig just kind yeah. of floats above those weeds a little better. Just using that long shank hook, which I like because you can get that hook to ride out further behind the head of the minnow if you need to, but it's like that big stout hook on there. You're barely ticking the bottom, probably riding a few feet off the bottom at times, but in this clear water, I don't think they have any issue coming up for it. Good one. Yep. Looking looks like good. a heavier fish that, here, Al. That looks like a big fish. Yep. Can't even hardly get the rod out yeah. of the water. It's kind of what we want. Yep. I'm just going to hook the boat around here. Yeah, that steady kind of bend makes for a nice fish. Yeah, they are so strong. Uh, here she comes. That's what we're looking for. Ready? Whenever you are. Beautiful. One more time. There we go. Nice All right. job. There we go. <laughs> Big fish. Yeah, look at that. That's a great there you walleye go. there. Good show. Looked right in the corner of the mouth. It was perfect. Beautiful fish. Nice. Yep. Nice. Special place here. A lot of water, a lot of different yep. opportunities. There's so many spots out on this lake. You know, we're just using a six and a half to seven foot medium or even a medium light action, fast action graphite rod's gonna work well for this. In the shallow water with these really light jigs, you can use a lighter rod, especially when you're dragging them like this. And basically the program is just a far cast behind the boat and just long lining them. 
just so these small jigs just tickle over the tops of these weeds that are emerging on these flats. Oh, a All fish right. on here, Good one. Good one. Oh, yeah. Look at there. Yeah. We'll take that. We will. We'll take that. Nice fish. Nice fish. There. Thank you. All right. Nice Boy, fish. I tell you what, it's just such a fun way to catch them, too. Six pound test. It's dragging a either a 16th or an 8th ounce jig. Yeah. Just a cast behind the boat. Nice. And sometimes when these fish jump on it, they hit it hard. Nice. Healthy fish, and I like the proportion. Yeah. Good job. Nice. What we need. You just see this wind's laying down, and we'll just get a little puff. Sometimes you can almost see just the ripples coming towards you. And, but there's no doubt that when the wind blows out here, this is a lot easier fishing. You know, the wind blows on the, these, these flats are so big and massive, and so, you know, one thing I think that happens too is that you know it's not like these fish slide out into deeper water when it lays down they just quit moving they quit eating and so a lot of times you're just you know we're just kind of working the same areas and if you get a little puff of wind you're trying to get right back over your waypoints because those fish are still there you just gotta wait for them to turn back on you know when we find fish up in the shallow sand catching fish below the boat can be pretty difficult you know typically you're going to catch a lot more fish if you just get your presentation away from the boat whether it's long lining jigs behind the boat or even casting a lot of times these fish are just spooking or bumping from underneath the boat and so that affects a presentation in the sense that you can catch fish on a lot of different presentations but if the fish are spooking below the boat it doesn't do any good to fish blow the boat and so that's why long lining these light jigs can be so effective because that jig is just light enough to get down but it isn't so heavy enough where it bogs down in that occasional sand grass because if you look at an aerial view of what this bottom looks like it almost looks like a marbled cake where you have patches of sand and then patches of this car and just low-lying weed that only grows up maybe this far off the bottom and so if you use too heavy of a presentation whether it's a bottom bouncer or a heavy jig rig whatever it is you're just gonna get bogged down in those weeds and if you have any type of weed on your presentation you're just not gonna catch these fish there we go got him all right Al How's he feel? Yeah, it's a little bigger. All right, I'll get reeled up here and I'll give you a hand. Not far from that yeah, other. Yeah, it's a big, bigger fish. Oh, this one's got a head shake. Yeah, this one here's uh, this one here's putting up a fight. Yeah. Huh? Starting to stretch that line. Look at that. And when you got to crouch down to I him. I can handle that. No, carbon fishy. Oh yeah, look at there. Yeah, better fish. Yeah, respectable walleye. Mm -hmm. Come on up here. Nice, nice Good. job, Al. When we were fishing, uh, to be productive with this, we tried this long line fishing. And what we were meaning by that, we go with the lightest jig we possibly could, and we also put uh, a minnow on the back end of it. And so what we did is we let the lines out a long ways back behind the boat because it was perfectly flat, and we didn't have any wind. And that helped us pick up several fish and some of the bigger fish that we caught. So that pattern works all the time. You know, this water is just shallow enough and this water is just clear enough where you're not gonna mark a lot of fish below the boat. You're not gonna catch a lot of fish below the boat. So typically, you know, you're getting that jig out away from the boat, basically just long lining. But with that being said, you know, when it comes to marking fish, you know, that side scan or side imaging is invaluable. And if you have a HDS carbon in particular, there's a new upgrade this spring where you can update the software and bring it even better clarity and contrast, especially when you get out away from the boat. So a lot of times on the scale, I might have it set at 60 feet. And as you're going along, you know, you're going to see the rocks, you're going to see the dips in the sand, you're going to see the little clumps of that junk weed car on the bottom. You're also going to find fishing areas. There's a fish, just a second. Got him. All right. <laughs> You're on fire over there. <laughs> How's he feel? Uh, hard to tell. Just swimming at me. I'll slow us down here a touch. Feel like a better fish? Hey, you know, that fooled me every time <laughs> so far. 
Oh, yeah, just Whoa. wrapped up. There just wrapped their own is what you there. did. Nice fish. Yep. Nice one. Yeah, this is still one of the best places of Minnesota if you just want to catch a lot of walleyes. Boy, I tell you what, we've thrown back a pretty good meal of fish, you know what? Nice work. Good. Those good. last two fish have come on rainbows. Yeah, and big. Here, why don't you grab me a rainbow too? I'm going to change it up. Earlier this morning, we couldn't buy a fish on any of the bigger minnows, either rainbows or shiners. We caught everything on a small fat head, and now they're starting to change their attitude a little bit. Thank you. Well, we just came off, like I said, the spawning area, and these fish are still laying out here in the flats where they typically will spawn. What we have here is shallow water, pretty much from seven, eight, nine foot, and uh, the bottom is cara, and uh, they like that with sporadic weeds. And they'll sit in here because the, uh, the lake shiners and the, and the minnows will be in the inside of this area. And they'll sit in here for quite a while. And uh, they'll just move in and out depth-wise. Uh, but what we need really right now is wind. The wind has picked up a little bit. But uh, we need more than what we got going to make them trip their trigger. They fed so heavy the last couple of days um, that it doesn't surprise me they're slow. You know, it's still early in the year. When we first came out here this morning, that water temperature is right around 49, 50 degrees, 51 degrees. The sunshine's starting to pop out, so this water's warming up to 53 degrees. But it's still early, but we're dragging these jigs in from half a mile an hour. Sometimes we're speeding up to even up to a mile an hour, just so that those jigs just skim the tops of these weeds. And I think in a lot of cases, you can definitely do this too slow, because if you fish too slow, you're just going to get bogged down in the cara and the junk weed that's on the bottom. These fish are really scattered as well. I mean, they're spread out. That's one here, one there. So you just contact that many more fish when you cover some water. And you don't mark many fish, but you're gonna see some fish on the side scan. And so if you see a pot where there's multiple fish on the, on the side scan, you can always just stop in one spot and just cast. But this jig dragon works pretty good on these flats because they're big, they're massive. And you know, these fish move around. You never know where they're gonna show up. Half of it's just finding them. Big fish. Hit. Not that far off from one of our other waypoints. Is that right? So it feels pretty good. Good. Ooh, yeah, I got a head shake here, big one. Come on, stay on there, girl. I didn't even see yet. I can Coming try to turn the right boat here. here. Here she is right there. Hammer. Oh, there Hammer. Oh, there, nice. I'll hook them for you. Nice. Nice work. Smells bigger than that. <laughs> That's what makes it fun. One of my favorite ways to catch a fish right there. Yeah. You know, there'll be different windows each day where these fish will just turn on. And a lot of times it's caused by wind in the sense you can have the wind blow, it can just pick up for an hour or so and turn those fish on. Or sometimes the wind's blowing all day and you'll find a good bite that's pretty consistent all day long. But you know, when it lays flat, catching fish is all about making the right decisions. You know, a lot of times we'd get in a zone, maybe it was a 50 yard stretch where we were getting a little bit of activity where maybe we caught a few fish and we, and we had a few bites. And then, you know, maybe you make a pass or two and then nothing. Well, a lot of times what I like to do is just keep pulling around and just searching that area, but I don't ever go far. And a lot of times I can still see the different spots where we've caught fish. And, you know, a lot of times we might let a spot rest for maybe half an hour, an hour, 45 minutes, you know, loop around, try some different areas, just, you know, see if you can bump into a new pot of fish. But, you know, every hour or so, just go back to those areas where you caught fish earlier because it's amazing. When it lays flat and these fish are off, these fish aren't moving around. They're just laying there. And so a lot of times you can go back there later and maybe a fish or two have maybe moved up and they're starting to feed or maybe the wind blows a little bit and it gets those fish active. But a lot of times, you know, you're going over fish the whole time and you're just waiting for those, just those spurts of activity where those fish will bite. I got one here, Al. Okay, good, good. Waking up now. Oh, is he? <laughs> Looks like a good fish, too. Yeah. Doesn't want to come up off the bottom. No, he's, she's hanging <laughs> tough. Get her up here first. Yeah, keep her from going be below the boat. Yeah. See the leader. Oh, yeah. Good one? Oh, yeah, look at there. Oh, yeah, there's a good fish. Ready? I'm Anytime ready. you tell me when you're ready. Yeah. There you go. I don't hide. Ah, got some nice. That's the left hand. Okay. This there we'll we go. Her. All there right, you go. nice. Nice fish. Yeah, you're That's good. what we've been looking for. Yeah. Just gorgeous here. Get her That's 
a perfectly healthy fish. Yeah. Proportion wise, the whole thing, nice. Beautiful. Wow, huh? Beautiful. Yep. All right, get her back in the water here. And there she goes. There she goes. That was cool. That was a cool bite, just wham. Sometimes they hit it so hard. Leech Lake is a, a huge body of water. We have 112,000 acres and it expands out all kinds of directions. There are rivers coming in and going out. We have rock structures, we have all kinds of sandbars, but we do have some massive weed beds and uh, which leads to good bass fishing, good panfish fishing and pike. Uh, that's mainly what leech is like. We're not moving her now. Well, that looks like a good one. All right, oh. Al. Let's hope she hangs in there. Oh, it's acting like a big fish. Yeah, I'll get the net here. Oh. I'll slow the boat down here and touch for you. Ah, she got big. Oh, I seen her out there. Pretty good sized fish, I think. Coming up, Jace. I'll turn the boat here a little bit for you. Stand down. Yeah, we want to fight the fish under the boat. Oh yeah, that's a dandy owl. I haven't seen her yet. Yeah. Coming at you. Big, dark, gold walleye. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Here, I'll turn her. Come on, there, there you go. There we go. All right. Good show. <laughs> we'll take that one. That is a gorgeous fish here. Let me hand you your prize here. There you go, Al. Look at that. Oh, that's dandy owl. Grab that hook out for you. Here you go, sir. All right. There we go. Nice work. Nice work. Boy. Dark one. That's fun fishing, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sure know, is. There's six, seven, eight feet of water all day, and, and you know, these fish don't leave. I mean, they're they're here That's the whole right. time, and they'll be here for, oh, goodness, at least two yeah. or three more weeks. Oh, pretty at least, heavy. Yeah. Yeah. If the wind blows, you can get these fish in these spots all summer. You know, when you get conditions like this, you know, good water visibility, fairly flat, calm. You know, we've had to change things a lot just to try to figure out what these fish want. I wouldn't say they're jumping in the boat, but if you make the right adjustments, you can pick away at them. And so biggest thing, you know, is trying to find the right jig size to match up with your speed. You know, a lot of times we're using the smallest jig we can get away with. The other thing that we're experimenting with a lot is just the size of the minnow and the kind of minnow. So typically up in northern Minnesota here, you have shiners, which typically work really well early in the year, especially. We've had a few runs here where it seemed like, you know, like maybe an hour window where these fish are definitely preferring shiners, and there's other times where the fish just wanted a smaller fathead minnow or a smaller rainbow, but some days those fish want that big minnow, and sometimes when you use a bigger minnow, you might have to adjust your speed. That was one of the things we found today is you put a really big minnow on with the speeds that we were going, we were just getting hung up in that weed growth that's growing on the bottom, and so trying to find the right color, right size, there's a lot of things you can experiment with, a lot of variables, but over the day, you know, you're gonna fine tune that stuff, and so a lot of times, you know, greens are a good color out here, watermelon, Something that's got green or chartreuse or orange on it can be pretty good. Gold can be a good color out here, but once you get it dialed in, you're gonna catch fish. There, I got one. Good show, good show. Jeez. Can't even budge them. <laughs> that's always a good sign, huh? Yeah. Let's <laughs> try to wear it out. They're sure hugging the bottom nice. They are. That's fun. See down quite a ways, too. Yeah. You know, that water's probably warmed up four or five degrees today. Uh, yeah, I would think so. You can already see it's starting to green yeah. up, and that'll make this even better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, nice fish. Mm. Fun to see. Yep, and of course, we'd be laughing if there was some wind blowing on these flats <laughs> right now. There. Great. Yeah. We've done beautiful. Get that fish in the water here. Thanks for the fight. Oh, yeah. Got him. Yep. <laughs> You're on fire, Al. Oh, yeah. Probably not as big as the last one, but it's a good fish. All right. <laughs> oh. Take it back. Head shake. <laughs> oh, man. That's good. Kind of, yeah, she's out there with you. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and bring her down, Al. You're coming in? Yep. All right. On top. Big fish. There. 
from underneath with the net. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> there you go. Right now, Leech Lake, uh, it's in pretty good shape and uh, we hope that it'll continue. We have all species of fish. You can't even imagine how many fish have been caught, you know, just doing what we're doing right here today. Our con major concern is this is the future of this area. Tourism has always been here and that's what they want to keep and maintain. So we're going to have to monitor it and stay on top of it. We have task force which are watching it very closely with the DNR.